you. Senator Coons. Um, thank you, Chairman Menendez, Ranking Member Risch, and uh, Chairman Menendez, thank you for um, convening this hearing and for ensuring that Sudan remains high on this committee's agenda at this critical time to see uh, a full committee hearing on the ongoing crisis in Sudan with a robust participation from Democrats and Republicans is genuinely encouraging. Assistant Secretary Fee, it's great to see you again. Um, thank you for your service and your focus on this critical issue. And Deputy Administrator Coleman, good to see you as, uh, as well. Um, I've worked hard over recent years to support Sudan's peaceful revolution, the inspiring um, civilian-led nationwide uprising that um, as one of the most successful grassroots pro-democracy movements in recent years, actually overthrew, overthrew, a, overthrew a, a brutal dictator um, who had repressed the people of Sudan for decades and um, committed genocide. Um, we've worked hard on the appropriation of over a billion dollars in both economic aid and, as my friend and colleague uh, Senator Van Hollen was just referencing, important debt relief to help support a transition to civilian government. Um, we've made a significant down payment uh, on a democratic future for Sudan, uh, but I'm gravely concerned um, that this transition is badly off track and without um, active diplomatic engagement and some strong and decisive action by the United States, this transition may effectively be dead. Um, to live up to the commitments that we've made to the Sudanese people to support their aspirations, we have to take a greater leadership role, and I'm grateful for the steps you've been taking, Madam Assistant Secretary. Um, as a number of my colleagues have asked, um, a lack of accountability for atrocities committed in Darfur and throughout Sudan, um, the killing of protesters in recent years, and the recent coup, all of this has established a pattern of impunity for military leaders um, who kill and harm unarmed civilians and peaceful protesters. We've seen that um, continue in recent weeks as the military has systematically arrested and even assassinated some of the most effective community organizers and obstructed injured protesters from getting needed medical care. Uh, I've introduced the Sudan Democracy Act to sanction those involved in these activities and others who undermine democracy and human rights and the networks that sustain them. And the administration's publicly stated it'll hold military authorities responsible. Um, what does this mean in practice? Um, how will the U.S. hold them accountable? Um, and what does your previous comment that the security forces are not monolithic mean for a path forward where we could somehow secure a transition to a wholly civilian government? Thank you, Senator. Uh, first of all, for your engagement and involvement in this important issue uh, and for your assessment of the, of the challenges that we face. Uh, I do believe, I said to the chairman, uh, this hearing is a terrific way uh, to, to reinforce uh, the administration's diplomacy and signal uh, to all the parties of Sudan that we are with the civilians, we are with this uh, 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 transition, and uh, it needs to move forward if they want to have any kind of partnership with us. Uh, and so that's been basically the bottom line, how we implement it. Uh, we've talked, uh, Senator Coons, about using authorities that exist. We've talked about developing new authorities. And we've talked, uh, we're, we're looking very hard right now at non-traditional methods of pressure, uh, particularly uh, in terms of, uh, for example, the illicit gold uh, mining that takes place. Uh, to tr and we're also looking at the many enterprises that are owned by security forces. So there's a lot of active effort underway to augment the already significant pressure that we've discussed uh, from the suspension of both debt relief and, and uh, bilateral and multilateral assistance. Well, as the chairman mentioned, um, if you need additional um, authorities, please uh, do communicate that to this committee. I'm concerned the military will simply organize um, elections uh, that are sham elections in 2023 that they'll use to legitimize their rule next year. Um, how are we working with our regional partners, um, our allies, um, and relevant Sudanese stakeholders to prevent that outcome, uh, which um, thousands and thousands of civilians have taken to the streets to prevent and, and that they have consistently spoken out against and rejected? That's a valid concern. However, uh, the military leaders have claimed that they want international support for those elections. If we, uh, we want to be in a position to provide that support, and of course, that would be geared towards credible and transparent elections. Uh, and also the Sudanese people, as we've seen, uh, I, I'm confident would not participate in any sort of Potemkin uh, type election. 
Uh, we uh, talked earlier, Senator Coons, and I think it's worth emphasizing about the importance of making clear, particularly to our Arab partners and Israel who engage in Sudan, that, that the prospect of security from uh, a military-led government is, a, is, a, is not a, a, a true uh, uh, reality. It, it cannot, that cannot work. Sudan's history shows that. The, the fact that the security forces are split is not necessarily a positive uh, uh, situation, but it does mean uh, that they, like the civilians, uh, uh, because there are fractures and fissures, uh, uh, may be unwilling um, collectively uh, to do a, a severe uh, repression and a severe brack, um, crackdown. That's what we've been trying to say to them. Don't go that path. Don't be the leaders that lost Sudan. Be the leaders that affected this transition. Um, so it, it, it's a tricky, it's a tricky balance, frankly. Well, there's a number of us who look forward to working with you on that. Um, I, I've just submitted a nomination for the Nobel Peace Prize for Sudan's resistance committees and the Central Committee of Sudan Doctors. I hope you will work to make sure that they are uh, part of the center of any political process. I look forward, um, uh, Deputy Administrator Coleman, to hearing an update about how the administration is planning to leverage the $700 million in frozen uh, funds, and I hope that uh, we will consult in advance as you craft uh, the broader framework for the U.S.-Africa Leaders Summit um, later this year. With that, Mr. Chairman, thank you.